Welcome to Tales of Honor, a podcast with a mission to tell the true stories of every recipient of our nation's highest military award, the Medal of Honor. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's episode of Tales of Honor podcast. This is the first of the month of June, continuing on with our living Medal of Honor recipients mostly from the Vietnam War, which will be no different tonight. Uh, I do have two birthdays to go over today. One was yesterday, and one is tomorrow. We'll start off with yesterday's. This birthday belongs to Mr. Robert O'Malley, who is a former U.S. Marine Corps sergeant that earned the Medal of Honor for his actions during the Vietnam War. So a very happy 79th birthday, as he was born in June 3rd, 1943, to Mr. Robert O'Malley. I covered Mr. O'Malley's story way back on episode number 66, and I have a link in the show notes for you to go check out his story if you haven't already done so. And tomorrow's birthday is Mr. Peter Lemon, who was born on the 5th of June, 1950, and he is a former U.S. Army sergeant that earned the Medal of Honor for his actions during the Vietnam War as well. So a very happy 72nd birthday to Mr. Lemon. I also covered his story back on episode number 602, And I have a link in the show notes for his story as well. Those are the only birthdays I have to go over today. And I don't have any other news or corrections or any other things to go over. So let's get on with today's tale of honor. Paul was born on the 1st of August, 1943 in Washington, D.C. and moved around a lot with his family due to his father being an Army officer. After graduating from high school in 1961, Paul chose to attend the U.S. Military Academy at West Point, where his father dropped him off and told him he would see him again at graduation. He graduated in the top 5th percent of his class and then attended Stanford University for his master's degree. Paul was able to attend Ranger and Airborne schools during the summer break before receiving his MBA. He deployed to the Republic of Vietnam in 1967 as a second lieutenant with the 187th Infantry and after 30 days was promoted to first lieutenant. Then, 30 days after that, Paul was given command of his first company, which consisted of only himself. He would report to his company by himself and do formations by himself, and eventually the company would be filled in with what Paul called the rejects from other companies. They received the nickname The Clerks and the Jerks, and Paul was the only member of the company whose first time it was in country. It was his actions on the 18th of March, 1968, that would later earn him the Medal of Honor. The citation reads, Captain Paul W. Buka, Infantry, while serving as commanding officer, Company D, 3rd Battalion Airborne, 187th Brigade, 101st Airborne Division, near Phuoc Vinh in Binh Duong Province, Republic of Vietnam, on 18 March, 1968. For conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity and action at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty, Captain Buca distinguished himself while serving as commanding officer, Company D, on a reconnaissance in force mission against enemy forces near Folk Vin. The company was inserted by helicopter into the suspected enemy stronghold to locate and destroy the enemy. During this period, Captain Buca aggressively and courageously led his men in the destruction of enemy fortifications and base areas and eliminated scattered resistance, impeding the advance of the company. On 18 March, while advancing to contact, the lead elements of the company became engaged by the heavy automatic weapon, heavy machine gun, rocket-propelled grenade, claymore mine, and small arms fire of an estimated battalion-sized force. Captain Buca, with complete disregard for his safety, moved to the threatened area to direct the defense and ordered reinforcements to the aid of the lead element. Seeing that his men were pinned down by heavy machine gun fire from a concealed bunker located some 40 meters to the front of the positions, Captain Buca crawled through the hail of fire to single-handedly destroy the bunker with grenades. During his heroic action, Captain Buca received a painful shrapnel wound. Returning to the perimeter, he observed that his unit could not hold its positions and repel the human wave assaults launched by the determined enemy. Captain Buca ordered the withdrawal of the unit elements and covered the withdrawal to positions of a company perimeter from which he could direct fire upon the charging enemy. When one friendly element retrieving casualties was ambushed and cut off from the perimeter, Captain Buca ordered them to feign death and he directed artillery fire around them. During the night, Captain Buca moved throughout the position, distributing ammunition, providing encouragement, and ensuring the integrity of the defense. 
He directed artillery, helicopter gunship, and Air Force gunship fire on the enemy's strong points and attacking forces, marking their positions with smoke grenades. Using flashlights in complete view of enemy snipers, he directed the medical evacuation of three air ambulance loads of seriously wounded personnel and the helicopter supply of his company. At daybreak, Captain Buca led a rescue party to recover the dead and the wounded members of the ambushed element. During the period of intense combat, Captain Buca, by his extraordinary heroism, inspirational example, outstanding leadership, and professional competence, led his company in the decimation of a superior enemy force, which left 156 dead on the battlefield. His bravery and gallantry at the risk of his life are in the highest traditions of the military service. Captain Buca has reflected great credit on himself, his unit, and the U.S. Army. After his deployment, Paul returned to West Point to teach, and in April of 1970, he received a call informing him that the Distinguished Service Cross that he had earned from his actions was being upgraded to the Medal of Honor. Paul said that he didn't deserve it, and even said that he would turn it down. He was told that it wasn't his medal to turn down. On the 14th of May, 1970, Paul received the Medal of Honor from President Nixon in a ceremony at the White House along with 11 others. Paul left the Army in 1972 and worked for Ross Perot's company, Electronic Data Systems, as well as starting his own investing company and served on the board of Wheeling Pittsburgh Steel Corporation and as the president of the Congressional Medal of Honor Society. Paul William Buca is 79 years old as of this recording, and he resides in Ridgefield, Connecticut with his wife, Cynthia, with whom he has four children. And that was a tale of honor. Thank you for listening to Tales of Honor, and if you enjoyed the show, please be sure to subscribe and tell your friends and family. Tales of Honor is written and produced by Christoph Ambrosch, and theme music is Loyalty and Duty by Floru's Music. If you have any questions, you can send an email to talesofhonorpodcast at gmail.com, and please be sure to visit talesofhonorpodcast.com for more episodes and information. 